there and welcome to another book review. Um, filmed this on the same day as my first one. We're just gonna piecemeal them out into the world. Um, so the book I will be critiquing, reading, giving my opinions on is um, The Tortilla Curtain by T.C. Boyle. I read this for class and I have a lot of feelings about it. Um, so on Sierra's scale of high literature to airport smutty read, I would say this is probably a 3.5 to 4. So it's pretty important, but it is kind of difficult. The themes are difficult, the language is not. So it's literature. There's some ugly stuff in here. This book deals with a lot of themes involving racism, privilege, the American dream, stuff like that. And it gets pretty ugly. Um, I'm gonna put a little trigger warning and say that there is sexual assault, violence, blood, guts, all sorts of nasty things in this. And it's a very sad read. There's also infantile death and um, attempted murder. But it's not like a mystery or anything. It's just, you see it all coming. So there's two different types, there's two chapters in this book. And there's the chapter about the white people, and then there's like the chapter about the um, Mexican immigrants. And it swaps back and forth, and I'm gonna be honest, the white people bored me to tears. They're privileged white people. They're more worried about what's gonna happen with their homeowners association, and what color eggshell they can paint their house, and should we build a wall? And then at some point, mountain lions get into their yard and kill their two purebred dogs. There, There is death in this. I did mention that. Um, they kind of just remind me of people who I've gone to school with in the rich neighborhoods. It's like, yeah, you're really worried about your Tesla. I get it. <laughs> um, but then we, you get a chapter, after reading about the white people, then you get a chapter about the Mexican immigrants, the Rincon family. And it is America and Candido. Their story is so sad. Like, no, like nothing goes right for them. Like the entire time you're reading, you're just watching it like go downhill and you're just like trapped and strapped in for the ride and you're like, this is horrible, get me off. Like, I would think as a reader, once in a while, they would get like a little, little, little respite as a treat, you know? I didn't see an ounce of respite in the story. So I'm gonna give a really quick like bullet point version of all the horrible things that happened to these people. Um, one, first page, page number one, Candido gets hit by a car. Can't work so they lose money and they're living in a ditch by the way, did I mention that? Then America goes to work to try and make money because Candido is completely destroyed in the ravine because he was hit by a car. After that, there is a very graphic sexual assault scene in the woods, which is great. Not my greatest fear or anything. Fine. Then, she's sick from it because of course she is because they don't have a doctor or any form of internal plumbing, um, indoor plumbing. Um, from there, he finally gets work. They're barely making ends meet. They're still living in a ditch. Um, the area where he goes to work is shut down because white people are not very nice to them. And they just, they keep, it, 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 it's this horrible spiral. And then they finally get like an ounce of respite in the gift of a frozen Thanksgiving turkey from these two, um, probably high college kids in a quickie mart and they finally have some respite they're like we're gonna have a good meal for the first time in like literally nine months timing is interesting there don't you think but what happens when you put fire and turkey grease together in the woods <sighs> forest fire massive forest fire they are running for their lives and it is only seconds after they finally like douse themselves in water to like get the smoke and soot and burning embers off of them, that America is like, 
So the baby's coming. She gives birth to a beautiful little girl who we later learn has had some complications and is blind. And unfortunately, they don't have resources to take care of a child like that. And so then they're eating dog food and eating cats because they can't find work and they're living in somebody's shed. Hmm. So, what do you think happens next? Do you think that's the end of their tragedies? No, of course not. Then the same white guy who hit Candido with his car tries to kill them with a gun during a, a rainstorm. Rainstorm plus fire damage equals mudslide. They careen, fall, almost die in the mudslide. Candido is able to hold on to America and they're like, oh my god, it's okay. We're gonna be okay. Like, everything is gonna be okay. I'm not gonna spoil the next moment for you, but it's bad. Um, and so the story ends with Candido actually pulling the white guy's head up over the water to be like, okay, I'm not gonna let you die even though you just tried to kill me. It's an interesting novel. It's a hard novel. It's The language is fairly easy for anybody to read. The topics are particularly difficult. And I would say it's an important read. I would say I would probably go back and reread it. But here's the thing. I had not steeled myself. Like, I was just like, do, 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 do. I guess I'm just going to read some of this book. And then the um, assault in the woods scene happened. And I was sick for, like, three days afterwards. Because I didn't have that, like, I'm reading literature wall up and so I was very upset by it and had trouble reading the rest of the book. I think if you are able to distance the novel from yourself you're going to be able to read it a lot better than I was. It's a hard read. It's a very hard read. For a book for school? Fine. I got you. We're gonna read some nasty stuff. But I wouldn't necessarily pick this off the shelf for fun. And I think that's about all. Literature isn't for the faint of heart, and uh, read on, I guess.